Thank you for joining us for Building the Business Case for Virtual SAN. Today I have with me Rafael Cabeza from our Storage and Availability Business Unit. We also have with us a customer. We have Jordan here from Domino's, and we're going to go through a session today to give you a little overview. Virtual SAN, there's a lot of sessions this VMworld, so we're going to touch on it in case you haven't been to one yet or you're excited to go to some tomorrow with our launch announcements. Talk through what is HCI, hyperconverged infrastructure. You're hearing a lot about it. Your teams are talking about it, maybe even evaluating it. And deep dive into hyperconverged infrastructure, looking at the storage costs. With that, we also have a new vSAN assessment tool that was launched last July. And so as customers, your partners, or your VMware reps might be calling you up, sharing this information with you, Rafi is going to do a live demo for us. And we're going to close, sharing additional resources, hearing more from Domino's, and I hear there's a special treat that might be coming a little later. So with Virtual SAN, this is the third generation of Virtual SAN, our 6.1 release coming up. And what Virtual SAN allows you to do is take the same servers you're using for compute, pooling the direct attached storage within those servers, and creating a very resource efficient, hyper converged solution that's going to give you benefits of integration with the entire VMware stack, as well as the ability to scale from two nodes, vSAN for robo announcements are coming out this week, all the way to 64 with what we announced last February with vSAN 6.0. For virtual SAN, we have a bunch of overviews coming up this week. Specifically today, what we want to share with you is the idea that it's hyper-converged. And some of the value that you have when you take virtual SAN, you pair that with vSphere and put that within your x86 server, you're first going to get that efficiency. You have a single stack. We talk a lot about vSAN being simple, meaning if you know vSphere, you know virtual SAN. It's the same console that folks that are inside the vSphere administration, you're able to see all of your vSAN, your policies, your disk groups, how is it running within your vSphere environment. You also have that native integration. So any of the features that you're using on your VMs today, storage, DRS, vMotion, being able to take those and apply it to your direct attached storage. Finally, we have the hardware choice. This might mean a ready node, build your own. We're really pleased to partner with our OEMs that you see listed there. Visit them on the solutions exchange floor. We'll hear a little bit about Cisco today and how they helped with Domino's virtual SAN story. And with that, we summarize and think, what is it, the HCI evaluation criteria today? You think about simplicity, the performance and scalability, cost, and choice. What we see with virtual SAN is the ability to have that two-click provisioning within the environment you're already comfortable, being able to have one and a half to five X faster performance running again in the same servers for compute. You don't have to invest in additional hardware or software. You're leveraging vSphere and virtual SAN at a cost that's very attractive to allow your businesses to spend IT funds into building the business forward, moving on to new initiatives instead of trying to solve pain points on performance or simplicity. Finally, our choice, being able to meet your needs and scale as you go. So I'd like to hand it over to Jordan to introduce himself and what the Domino's team were looking at before the virtual SAN. All right. Thank you, Madeline. Um, as she said, my name is Jordan Glaman, and I'm a member of our virtualization and compute and storage team. So we handle the all of the virtualization, um, the VMware platform, and the compute layer and the storage layer mm -hmm. for all of Domino's Pizza globally. Um, so basically, I just want to introduce um, Domino's Pizza as a company. Many of you probably know um, what Domino's does. We deliver pizza globally. Um, but I have some interesting facts to go over. Um, so as of a couple uh, last month, we have over 12,000 stores um, in over 80 markets, and we sell over a million and a half pizzas a day, um, and that's on the global scale. And then for last year, um, our retail sales were almost nine billion, um, and you'll notice that we actually sell more internationally than we do domestically, um, and we've been growing and growing internationally every year. Um, 
And then the last key fact here is um, we do a, quite a bit of our business digitally, um, whether that be on the, the online website or through any of the um, tablets or iPhones. So um, when you hear our CEO and CIO talk, a lot of times they refer to us as a technology company that happens to sell pizza. And that, that comes from all of the innovations that our IT department comes out with um, on pretty much a yearly basis. Um, interesting fact, when I first came in uh, uh, to Domino's, I did not know this, but um, Domino's itself is always within the top three on e-com sales. Um, so the big, the big two are obviously Apple and Amazon, but we're, we're up there with them as far as over, overall e-com sales. Um, and then just the end of last year, we um, surpassed 50% of our sales came from digital channels. Um, and we hit that right at the end of the, end of the year to meet our goal. Um, and then the last thing I have on here is um, we have this new Domino's Anywhere platform. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have seen the new commercials, but we have a new commercial out that has um, like big celebrities like Eva Longoria and um, Richard Sherman in it. And they're basically going over how you can order Domino's through all these various channels. So we have the, the Ford Sync integration. Um, we have integration with Samsung Smart TVs. Um, you name it, pretty much. Um, the big one that we just came out with at the end of last year was voice ordering via DOM um, on your iPhone and Android. Um, and the key factor there is we, we were the first to market, um, I believe, anywhere in the world as far as um, being able to order through a voice uh, recognition software. Um, and then we also have the tweet to order and text to order, which just came out recently. So um, to get more into the, the vSAN use case, um, so basically our, our business unit came to us and wanted to expand the online ordering outside of the United States and Canada. So we had to um, provision a new data center. Um, they wanted somewhere in Europe, so we we settled on Germany to handle the online ordering for the uh, African and Middle Eastern markets. Um, so they wanted a, a small footprint to start, but they wanted to sc uh, scale and grow that pretty quickly. Um, and then it, they wanted it to build on the same platform slash code base as what we use for the US and Canada for the online ordering um, and leverage the similar technologies that we have today. So. We're a pretty big uh, UCS shop and uh, a VMware shop, so we wanted to take advantage of those technologies as well. Um, we also had a, a smaller budget for the compute and storage components just because of the fact that we needed all the different network gear in the stack. Um, so we had like load balancers, load, balan uh, load balancers, firewalls, switches, etc., and that ate up a pretty substantial um, portion of the budget for this implementation. Um, and then also we needed uh, acceptable storage performance because um, some of the stuff that was uh, that the online ordering system uses is SQL databases for um, order recognition and where the orders are coming from. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand that over to Rafi. Um, take it back, Jordan. Yeah. So that's, that's exciting. New data center needs performance, needs scale, leverage the choice, the hardware. That's what I'm talking about. So from an HDI, these are requirements that are applicable to Domino's, maybe your e-commerce, maybe even other business. These are things that we feel virtual SAN is a good choice from VMware to meet the needs if you want that choice, the integration, the performance, and cost. We only have you, though, for another 50 minutes. So we're going to deep dive in this session for cost. For those that are interested in being able to look more at choice, We've got sessions coming up if you want to look right after this. It's our hardware guidance and sizing. We've got performance. If SQL is something that is also in your environment, probably. Take a look. Our storage 4544, being able to maximize your database performance. If you're looking at integration with our operations management suite, you're able to see more about your entire stack down to storage. 
And finally, if you're working with EUC or some of our other VMware offerings, you go and take a look at those sessions. But now for cost, hand it over to Rafi. Thank you, Madeline. So um, a lot of times cost is a, a prohibitive function for whatever new project you want to uh, take on in your IT environment. Uh, so uh, Virtual Sand was uh, made to and built to optimize on the lowest possible dollar per I.O. So uh, we'll deep dive into what's behind that statement. You obviously heard uh, some of our statements around up to 50% savings, but let's deep dive into what stands behind that and how do we come up with those numbers. So uh, uh, an interesting uh, research that uh, Gartner holds every year is called the IT key metrics. They go and they measure across different businesses, different sizes, what is the cost of different uh, silos in the data center. One of them is obviously storage. Uh, so this is how the pie looks like for the 2015 IT key metrics uh, released not so long ago. And you can see for storage, uh, if hardware and software is kind of your, uh, more of your capex and the rest is opex, then opex is about 40% of your storage costs. So a lot of time people would spend hours and days and months on optimizing on CapEx for that initial purchase, but will completely disregard the OpEx part, which uh, in our opinion is a dire mistake, because if you take a storage array and you keep it for four years, and 40% of your cost are OpEx, then you actually paid double your CapEx on OpEx during those four years. So OpEx is a big part of what we try to optimize with virtual sand. CapEx is great. It's the first thing that uh, a salesperson will start with. But OpEx has to be in your mind when you're considering a storage solution because you'll have to work with it day to day for the next three, four, five years. So uh, drilling down into uh, CapEx. So where are the CapEx saving coming from? Uh, so if uh, uh, we look at a typical uh, component price on a, uh, on a traditional storage array, uh, all these numbers are based on uh, uh, Gartner Competitive Profiles. It's a database that holds a lot of quotes for different storage systems. These are list prices. So. Uh, Obviously, there's uh, discounting in the back with, uh, with purchases, but uh, we'll compare list prices to list prices. Uh, so let's start with uh, a typical hard drive, you know, where the, most of your persistent data goes on. Uh, a one terabyte nearline SAS uh, would cost you around half a dollar per gig. Pretty low, right? A great deal, right? Uh, but uh, not really if you buy the same drive at your server vendor, right? You'll pay 80% less on that. Same exact hard drive. Flash, uh, another big uh, part. A lot of uh, organization are using more and more flash in their data center to accelerate I.O. Applications are demanding more I.O. and more throughput. Uh, and uh, if we look at a flash drive on uh, a typical caching mechanism on a hybrid array, uh, the cost, the list price at least, is around $22.5 a gig. Same SSD, exactly from your server vendor, would be about 90% less. Exactly same SSD. So uh, why pay more for it? Uh, last but not least, the networking equipment. There's a big fabric around uh, a storage array, and one of the components is fiber channel networking. Fiber channel networking is not uh, as cheap as, as you know. And if you take the, uh, the switch and the, um, and the NIC and ca calculate the cost per port, uh, we arrived at around uh, $1,200 uh, per port with uh, typical fiber channel networking. Uh, if you buy 10 gig networking, which is the recommended, not the minimum for virtual SAN, uh, you can save up to 70% on your networking gear, right? Uh, around $360 per port. So that's on, on the CapEx side. Another uh, big advantage that uh, people um, might not pay attention to when they buy their storage arrays 
is uh, the cost of storage keeps going down almost every day, right? You keep seeing those uh, prices, those dollar per gigs uh, on flash or hard drives keep going down and down. If you opened you know, the same uh, website uh, that sold you hard drives a month ago, I'm sure the price would be at least slightly higher. Uh, what Virtual SAN allows you is to buy that storage when you need it. See, if today the price was $2 per gig and you purchased for the next five years, you paid $2 per gig. And if the price in a month is $1 per gig or in a year it's half a dollar per gig, right, you can't buy it because you already pre-purchased for five years. But with Virtual SAN, because you grow as you go, right, you can buy as little as one hard drive to expand your cluster. You can buy that next hard drive in a year from today and enjoy that declining price curve, right? Uh, besides that, storage technology is not standing still, right? If you bought today a storage array for the next five years and the great next technology comes in two years, you can't enjoy that technology because you already pre-purchased. With Virtual Sand, we constantly work on certifying the latest and greatest storage devices to Virtual Sand. We have uh, NVMe uh, SSDs certified for uh, Virtual SAN. We have DIM-based, ultra-DIM from SanDisk certified for Virtual SAN. Uh, so all the, we work with all the uh, flash vendors to certify their latest technology on Virtual SAN so you can take advantage of it. Another part uh, around the granular uh, uh, the granular go-as-you-go scaling uh, is around cost, right? So if you pre-purchased a hybrid array in year one and paid $100,000 versus uh, buying the equivalent of virtual SAN uh, and bought the same amount of capacity in chunks. So what would typically uh, go with uh, a, a typical sales uh, transaction that uh, the sales of the hybrid area will tell you you're paying $4 per gig as you, you used all that space in day one. But in practice, the effective dollar per gig you're paying for is the one that you're using, right? If in year one you only used a third of that space and you'll only consume it in year three, in year one you paid almost $7 per gig. With virtual sand, because you only bought what you needed, the cost curve is almost linear. You only add uh, capacity and, and flash storage as you need, so your dollar per gig is really your dollar per gig and not a function of your usage. Another important metric that people uh, tend uh, to forget and uh, look, look over when they compare virtual sand to other storage solutions is the dollar per IOPS. As I said, uh, Virtual SAN was built to really deliver on the lowest possible dollar per IOPS. Uh, the, the performance benchmarks that we get out of Virtual SAN are really amazing. Uh, so if you take this uh, left side, those OLTP test results weren't done by us. It was actually information from our customer that was considering different storage solution and and agreed to share this with us. Uh, we can't disclose his name, he wanted to stay anonymous, uh, but you can see the result here of uh, the OLTP test on vSAN6 hybrid versus another hyperconverged solution and a popular hybrid array. So out of the box, quite impressive, right? Almost double the performance. And then if you layer on that the cost, this is when it's really staggering, right? It's less than a dollar per IOPS on virtual SAN. Our engineering team put a lot of effort into optimizing uh, the storage schedulers in the ESXi in order to deliver that sub-dollar uh, per IOPS cost. So uh, the performance you'll get out of vSAN is really, really uh, impressive in, uh, when you consider the cost. Uh, last, uh, I'll talk about OPEX. Um, we did a research uh, with a, a third-party analyst. We asked them 
to measure, because we know there's a great OPEX savings, uh, but we wanted to put a number behind it. We wanted them to actually measure how much time the typical storage tasks take uh, uh, on a typical storage array versus virtual SAN. Uh, the numbers they came back uh, to us were you know, uh, pretty amazing. We saw 90% uh, plus savings on all the typical uh, storage tasks. And if you translate those savings into uh, the overall uh, OPEX saving over a five-year period, you, you'll see close to 50% OPEX savings. On top of that, our performance team did some power and cooling research uh, and saw that the power and cooling uh, benefits are about 80%. And they compared the consumption of a storage array versus adding hard drives and SSDs into your uh, servers, so about 80%. Uh, if you take this, we came up with a, a roughly two-thirds savings on labor in terms of the times and the tasks. Um, and then uh, I think one interesting quote came from one of our customers, right? Uh, Union Hospital told us that uh, it's less than one-tenth of what they had to do. The tasks on virtual sand is one-tenth of the time on their traditional uh, storage array. They say virtual, managing virtual sand is kind of an oxymoron. Um, Last, I wanted to just summarize everything into uh, uh, one graph on kind of a, a typical scenario we see out there uh, at 200 VMs, 24 terabyte usable. You'll see it, that 50% that we're talking about. Uh, it takes into account the hardware, the SSDs, the hard drives, the software, the support, right? All this comes out to 50%. Very similarly, when you compare that to other hyper-converged solution, uh, this is a four-node appliance. Uh, the hardware and software are, of course, bundled. We sell them separately. Again, uh, close to 50% uh, savings. Uh, an interesting use case is virtual desktops. Uh, what you see here is the cost of scaling a storage solution with virtual desktop. So the bottom two are virtual SAN, and the difference between the bottom one and the slightly higher one is the cost of licensing. Uh, the bottom one is the one that included with Horizon. If you uh, paid attention to our announcement, you know that uh, virtual SAN Advanced is now included with the Horizon uh, Advanced and Enterprise Suite, so you get uh, virtual SAN with all the premium features, with the off-flash, with the stretch clustering. Uh, so that's included, and that's in the bottom uh, line. If you still, if you don't want to use Horizon, that's also fine. That's completely, uh, you know, your choice to use uh, something else, and you can still buy the licensing for virtual design separately. Uh, what happens with a typical all-flash array or a hybrid array is that because you prepay for the, those desktops, uh, once you start putting more and more desktops on your uh, storage array, the cost per desktop will go down. Uh, and then at a certain point, that storage array can't contain any more desktop just because the controller is your bottleneck, right? At that point, you have to buy a second storage array. And at that point, this is where you see those spikes. The IOPS requirement from the storage array will force you to buy a second one even if you have capacity left on it, right? Uh, and that, this is where the spike will go back up and your cost per desktop will keep jumping along like this, as opposed, opposed with virtual sand, which scales linearly on both performance and capacity. So uh, with that, uh, I want to do the live demo of uh, our virtual sand assessment. Virtual sand assessment is really about uh, whether virtual SAN uh, fits to your environment, how does it fit to your environment, what VMs are the best candidates for virtual SAN in your environment. Uh, so uh, the way virtual SAN assessment uh, starts, and, and we'll do a little role playing here uh, with Madeline. Uh, let's say I'm, I'm a partner, I'm a sales rep, right, and I want to do a virtual SAN assessment with my customer, Madeline. 
So uh, what I do is uh, I, I go into my uh, VIP portal, the, the vSAN assessment portal, and I type in uh, Madeline's information, and Madeline gets an email. So, Ma Ma go ahead. Yeah, so I've been, I've been invited to do this assessment, and I got an email. I, I click on that link. I'm at work, clicking on that. And I get into this portal, and the portal is going to allow me to set up an account that my, my rep, my partner, my VMware rep has already pre-established for me. And as I sign up for this infrastructure planner, which is a tool you might have used for vCloud Suite or some of our other software, um, it's a SaaS-based online, I'm going to find a collector appliance that I will download. Um, this is an OVA appliance. It's going to be for vCenter. So after I download it, quick download, I'm going to be able to deploy this within vCenter, and I'm going to have a key so that I have the assessment key assigned to me personally. And what we're doing here, simple OVF template. I want to deploy this at a time when my VMs are doing interesting things. Don't do this during a maintenance window. You don't need maintenance mode. You want to do it while your VMs are chatting and doing what they normally do because I'm collecting the information from my environment, not who I am as a customer or what my apps are, but the actual I.O. going back and forth so that the vSAN assessment tool can work with my partner and be able to share with me. Let's see where we are. We enter. Yes, we yes. enter assessment key, so we have the access. And this is going to be able to have the planner read through the assessment, what's actually being captured as we're going through my cluster and looking across all of my VMs to see what they're doing. At this point, um, uh, Malin has to pick how she wants to do the assessment, whether she wants to uh, look at a specific group of VMs to migrate, to, t to be candidates to migrate to virtual VirtualSAN, or she wants to look at an entire cluster, right? This connects to your vCenter so you can actually see your uh, different clusters and VMs. Next point, uh, we need to decide how long the assessment will run. So if you know your environment, you know if there's our peaks and valleys, right, uh, and you can configure that period to the right time period that fits your environment. Our default is seven days. We found that seven days is usually uh, goes through a, a typical cycle in your environment is enough to collect the data. At this point, you just enter your vCenter details so we can connect to that vCenter. And then uh, the data collection uh, continues for the period, for those uh, seven days in our case. Right? Uh, once that's success, right, what I'll do is uh, show you uh, real results of one of our uh, assessments. So uh, what I have here is our environment analysis, right? This ran in a real environment. Uh, we had 19 hosts uh, analyzed in the environment. Overall, 606 VMs in the environment. Uh, out of them, 590 were analyzed. Uh, 16 VMs were off or excluded for some reason. Uh, and we collected data for eight days. Uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the results here, uh, and then uh, you'll also have uh, an option here to choose whether uh, this environment fits best for a hybrid vSAN or an all-flash vSAN. The way we, we look at it is whether 80%, right, there's a, a small why here, why we recommend hybrid versus all-flash. If more than 80% of your environment fits well into a hybrid environment, gets a good score for an, a hybrid environment, we'll recommend you to go with hybrid just because it's more cost effective, right? Um, uh, on the bottom here, you'll also see uh, results around the caching, the minimum usable capacity. Uh, and then what you'll see here on the bottom is your VMs with the score, right? Every VM gets a score, and that score is a function of the I.O. trace of the VM uh, along that time period. So uh, the more uh, cash friendly the VM is, the higher the score, the better candidate uh, the VM is for a virtual SAN. Uh, so this is how it looks like, and you'll see those check marks, whether it fits into hybrid and all flash. Any VM that fits on hybrid obviously fits on all flash, uh, and you can continue to see all those VM 
You can also export this uh, table with VMs and data uh, for your uh, reference here. Uh, but the uh, other part, the, the interesting part, is that we added another layer of integration, uh, which uh, you can see here the storage capex savings. Uh, let me see. I hope it didn't log me out. So uh, I wanted to show you the connection, but uh, for some reason the CapEx report here is not working. All right. It did log me out, so I'll just sign back in. I'll, I'll, in that other tab, all you have to do is there's a button uh, to go to this uh, tool. Uh, so uh, the connection here is uh, not working so well. So I'll just show you what happens, right? If you saw we had 529 VMs, and once you press that button, it will automatically populate all the values in this sizing and TCO calculator, right? So this sizing and TCO calculator is available also if you want to do the assessment yourself and plug in all the details. But this one is based on the real results from your environment, right? We're plugging all the details. We have 529 VMs, 29 VMs per host. All these numbers came from the vSAN assessment information, right? The percentage read, how much VMAM, how many vCPUs, all that came in together. Uh, what you have to do is uh, decide whether this is a server or desktop virtualization. VCN assessment don't know what the type of VMs are. Uh, I'm sure you do. It's pretty easy. Uh, uh, and once you do that, uh, there's also an option to create uh, different profiles. Uh, so you could split these uh, 529 VMs to several profiles. The reason you might want to split it is around the availability policies. Uh, so, uh, just for your reference, uh, you can see what FTT means. It failures to tolerate. This is how we protect data on virtual SAN. So, the default is one, which means two copies of the data at all time. Uh, so, any one component failing in the cluster, whether it's a whole host, a hard drive, an SSD, uh, then virtual SAN can maintain full availability uh, of your data and VMs. Uh, so the default is one, if you want to split in your, your environment to different availability policies, you can definitely do that. Uh, I'll stick to the default just, uh, uh, just to save some time here. Uh, but once I go to the next step, uh, all right, zero on me. I'll just uh, type in manually here because things timed out. Uh, but we had 6.6 .6 here. And this was. So you can see a summary here that will also help you see how much usable capacity will be required once you split to several profiles. Uh, the next step would be defining your hardware requirements. And uh, for that, we have uh, our ready nodes. Who, who here is familiar with the virtual SAN ready nodes? One, two, all right. All right, so virtual SAN ready nodes. Um, just a quick uh, intro here. Uh, I'll take you to uh, our HCL page, slash go slash virtual SAN HCL. Um, and you can see that uh, here we have our ready nodes. 
uh, and there's the hardware quick reference guide, and we have different series and profile. We have four different profiles for hybrid and two different profiles for all flash, and they're all around capacity and performance. Uh, so if I click here on the hardware quick reference guide, you can see what are our guiding uh, numbers for those different profiles. Every OEM, Dell, Fujitsu, HP, uh, Cisco, they all have these uh, ready nodes uh, ready to quote for you. Uh, so you just have to ask them, or you can also uh, you can also look at them here, right? You'll have, let's say, I want the Cisco, the HY series, right? Uh, I'll go here and I'll have it. I can see the specs and uh, everything around those uh, ready nodes. So this is what stands behind that selection. So you can start with any profile you want and then tweak it, right? Uh, so our default starting point is the HY4 series. Uh, it comes with about four terabyte raw uh, and estimated to up to 10,000 IOPS per node. Uh, and you can see here uh, my scenario. So here on the left is my ready node selected and you can see the different uh, components that are pre-populated. I have one flash drive and four uh, one terabyte uh, hard drives here and I can customize it to reduce my cluster size. Right now if I want to host those 500 VMs I need a huge cluster of 57 host cluster. So what this calculator will do for you is uh, optimize the number of SSDs and hard drives you need to go from 57 to 19 host, right? That's what uh, this little I is here for. So if I'll change this to 2 and here to 12, I'll get down to uh, 20 nodes, but notice what happened here, right? I get this small warning sign that uh, my flash to usable capacity is below 10%. Our best practices is that you have at least 10% uh, uh, of, of flash to usable capacity. So what I'll do to get to that point is just change the SSD size, right? Uh, I'll go from 200 to 400 and the warning sign goes away. I have 13%. I'll continue uh, to the sizing results. I can look at my cluster. It's 240 terabytes overall. I can see how the capacity is distributed, right? I have my VMDKs, my replicas, the additional free space, even what VM swap file space we estimate uh, will come here. And we have, it, have an estimated IOPS from that cluster. That's based on our benchmarks. It takes into account the type of SSDs you picked, how many SSDs, how much flash, how many hosts, how many disk groups. It takes into account a lot of variables and gives you an estimate of what's the maximum IOPS from that cluster. Uh, You'll have some summary tables here at the bottom. I, I don't want to stall too much on that. Um, and next, uh, there's the TCO analysis, right? We pick a TCO period. In this case, it's a five-year TCO with a three-year refresh cycle. The next point, I'll pick uh, the standard uh, licensing and then uh, whether I want to include service and support and then what type of... Uh, alternative solution I want. We have pre-populated solutions. You can feel free to edit any of these solutions under the default assumption. Uh, so I went with the hybrid storage AI. Let's say I want to reduce the dollar per gig to three, right? And then I can also edit the networking estimates. Uh, so here, if you choose to use fiber channel networking with that solution, there's uh, some other savings. Uh, and then, uh, Next step would be the OPEX assumptions. We have that research that I showed you earlier with the Tanasia group, all populated here, and you can uh, plug in your assumptions, uh, specifically the labor cost as percent of uh, total storage budget, uh, and then the uh, power and cooling of OPEX. And in the end, uh, you will see the TCO results, the comparison of virtual SAN versus the other solution. There's both a table representation and a graphical for both cap and capex plus opex uh, and the best part is that you can also export this to a powerpoint 
uh, and, and take it out and, and show it to whoever you want. You can also save this analysis and come back to it and change your assumptions, right? Um, you'll, you'll have to register so we can uh, have the analysis connected uh, to your email. Uh, so you can pull it up the next time, but you can also share analysis with a colleague. Um, and and uh, that's it. So uh, we'll go back to our slide deck. And uh, in this case, I'll hand it back to Jordan uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, the results of uh, their use case uh, with uh, Virtual sent. Sure. Thanks, Rafi. Um, so all of that stuff that Rafi was mentioning, the um, TCO calculator, the vSAN assessment tool, all of that obviously wasn't available when we went through our whole thing, but very good information. We're actually looking at using that in upcoming weeks to analyze our um, US and uh, Canada online ordering site to make sure, see if they're a good fit for this as well. Um, but going back to our use case for the um, global online ordering uh, solution, so how this whole thing came to be, we did a POC of the vSAN configuration. We got a uh, demo from Cisco. So we got all the gear from Cisco, um, a four node cluster. Um, and we compared virtual SAN to a smaller traditional size array because this, this site was small to start and then we wanted to scale it. Um, the cost was a big factor in this. Going back to the previous slide when I talked to you in the beginning, um, we had a limited budget, so we needed to limit cost. In the virtual SAN configuration, um, in our case, when we compared the two together, um, was about 40% less than the smaller traditional array from one of the big vendors. Um, so the traditional array had more cost. Um, the support and maintenance costs alone were substantial. Um, and also, since we wanted to utilize fiber channel still, um, because um, that's what we use internally for all of our SAN stuff, we wanted to stay consistent. Um, it would require additional SAN fabric and the switches and all of that add on to the cost of the, the solution. Um, and then the traditional style array did not have the performance that we were looking for because it was going to start so small that we didn't have um, a large number of disks in there. Um, and then on the flip side of that, so the pros that we saw in the vSAN configuration when we POC'd it, it was extremely flexible and scalable. Um, it incorporated the hardware and the storage cost together because you're buying these things in the nodes. Um, and it works with the technologies we know. Very, very, very easy to install. Um, when we implemented this in Germany, we did, um, me and my coworker did this over the phone with uh, an individual that was out on site, and we were very easily able to set it up. Um, basically, all you gotta do is uh, mark your SSDs if they're not already marked, and then um, say, enable vSAN, and then um, configuration of your disk groups. And then, um, so the, the other point is the no, no storage array and switches equals less power and rack space, which is very important because the data center we ended up going into was a co-location data center, and that adds to the cost if you're using more racks. Um, so before I go into this, the, the configuration we actually came up with was a, a four node um, cluster and we used the ready nodes that Rafi mentioned before. Um, it was a Cisco UCS. We used the um, C240s, M3s, um, and basically we used the same ready node configuration that came with, um, which I believe was for a high performance market. And uh, the only thing we did was we bumped up a little bit of the memory on there to run the SQL workloads that we had. Um, so currently today, um, what we're running on vSAN out in Germany is we're on three live markets, um, Portugal, South Africa, and Saudi Arabia. Portugal is the biggest of the three right now. Um, and then we have more coming soon. These are the four countries that are coming soon onto the global online ordering solution. Um, in all, 
We installed this in January, um, and it's been in prod since May, so there's a little ramp up time for the, um, the site reliability team to install the servers and QA to test. Um, they're looking at 300 stores by the end of the year with more markets planned for next year. Um, heard there's some bigger countries coming on towards the end of this year and possibly next year. Um, and Portugal, is, like I said, is currently the heaviest user. Um, their day one, they did 25% of their sales digital, which is pretty big, I've been told. Um, generally, when any e-com customer launches, they'll be lucky to hit 1% to 2% of their sales to be digital on day one. Um, and we've been averaging 15 to 17% digital since then. Um, performance has been really good with the whole solution. Um, we haven't been able to push the limits with the current workload. Um, but I did put a link down to the bottom, which is a VMware blog, where they did some testings with um, the storage review company, did some testing with uh, OLTP loads and SQL Server. It's very, some very good stuff. It's all based on um, vSAN 6. Um, so be sure to check that out. And then, so inclusion, um, the vSAN solution was really simple for us. Like I said, really easy to install and manage. Built in the hypervisor, you don't have to add, um, have to manage another SAN array. You don't have to have another person to manage the SAN. Um, Non-SAN administrator, administrators can do it very easily. Um, scalable in performance, easy to grow without any downtime. All you do is add another node in, and you're gaining more storage capacity and additional more compute power. And then it's an innovative solution. Um, going back to the beginning when I first talked about Domino's, we're an innovative company. We're always looking to um, be on the cutting edge of everything. Um, this helps fit our model and help this grow into the, be the software-defined data center in Germany location. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Rafi to wrap things up. Thanks. Uh, so there's just a few announcements we want to make, and then we'll open up uh, for questions uh, that you might have. Uh, one uh, new promotion uh, with our partners, with Nixenta, uh, they have uh, a file services on top of Virtual SAN, and they're launching a new promo for the next uh, a few months. You can download a free Nixenta Connect to have file services uh, on top of Virtual SAN, including one-year free support. So that's uh, uh, nixenta.com slash vSAN promo if you want uh, to get on that. Uh, another uh, announcement that we did today is around our beta. Uh, we want uh, 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 your help to test the next version of Virtual SAN. Uh, we'll have some exciting uh, new features, uh, space efficiency uh, and data integrity. Uh, data du duplication, uh, erasure coding, um, uh, and uh, check, software checksum, uh, all these are in the beta. Uh, I had to mention this is a limited beta. We can't guarantee everybody's participation, but you can go and sign up. Uh, there's a quick form on vmware.com slash go slash vsan6 beta. Uh, in the expo area, uh, we uh, partnered with Intel to uh, showcase uh, the Intel 64 node all flash, uh, aka Big Daddy. Uh, so 64 node, 6400 VMs, uh, 500 terabytes of NVMe all flash, and 4.2 million IOPS. You can check it out in the expo area. And then, uh, just to conclude, right, if you want to get started with Virtual SAN today, there are three ways. You can do our hands-on lab for a hosted environment. You can play with Virtual SAN, see uh, the interface, uh, get a feel for it. You can also download a free eval uh, all the way from 60 days to a full year of evaluation. Uh, uh, we have partnered with VMOG, so a free Registration on VMUG entitles you for a six months evaluation, and for $200, you can get a full year of evaluation for virtual SAM. Uh, and the third way to get started is just you know, engage your sales rep, engage your partner, and ask him to do a vSAN assessment, see how vSAN 
uh, fits into your uh, environment. Uh, with that, uh, we'll uh, open it up for questions, if there are any. All right, so uh, there's a, a little treat for all of you that came to our session. There's a lot of pizzas in the back. Uh, uh, thanks for our friends from Domino's to help us get that into the room. Uh, so enjoy the pizza, enjoy uh, VMware. <laughs>